My name is Doug Parker. I'm the host of Cruise Radio, and this is a walking tour of Carnival Glory. Carnival Glory has been with the Carnival fleet for over 15 years at this point. It was launched in 2003 at 952 feet long. She's 110,000 tons, also 13 decks. And as far as passenger load, she carries 2,980 double occupancy. So uh, when you put a third and fourth person in the stateroom, that number is going to be well north of 3,000 people. Going back to 2011, Carnival launched this program called Funship 2.0, where it was $500 million invested across a few ships on their fleet. Um, and they were putting in like the Guy's Burger Joint, a Blue Iguana Cantina, a uh, Blue Iguana Tequila Bar. Some ships got the Red Frog Pub. Uh, this didn't get the pub. This got the Red Frog Rum Bar out by the pool and also the Alchemy Bar and things like that, different enhancements. So this ship went through Funship 2.0 in 2012, and then uh, it went through another dry dock in 2017 where it got a new water slide and a couple of other enhancements, just touching up the inside of the ship because you have to change the carpets and refresh the staterooms, right? So when you cross the gangway, you enter Carnival Glory on deck three. You enter the ship from an outside walkway, and then it dumps you right into the atrium. And that atrium is where the DJ is set up. It's a deck three four and five on this ship are the atrium and uh, you can actually stand in those areas if you're if there's like an atrium party happening and you don't want to be right in the middle of it just take a, a, a rail on deck four or five if you're walking forward from the main atrium that's where you're going to find the show theater at on carnival glory one thing I love about this class of ship is that you can enter the theater from deck three, four, or five. So on some ships, it only has two decks where you can enter. This gives you that third option. So if you want to watch the show, you can go down to deck three. If you want to sit mid-tier, deck four. If you want to sit at the top, uh, like me personally, I'm, I have a hard time sitting still and sitting through a whole show, even though it's only 45 minutes. Um, I like to sit at the very top and take that back table there. This way I can kind of scoot out and not bother anyone. Another thing I like about this is that there isn't a lot of poles in the area, in the way. So there's really not, like, like Carnival's newer ships, especially the Vista class, like Carnival Vista, Carnival Horizon. Even Carnival Sunshine has some restrictions where you have a hard time seeing the stage because there's these big poles in the way. Not as many. Obviously, the poles have to be there because it holds the roof up, right? But uh, not as many poles in the way and pretty good lines of sight throughout the whole theater. Going up to deck four, that's where you'll find the library. That's that middle deck between where you enter the ship on deck three and the promenade, which is one deck above you on deck five. The uh, library, really kind of a chill place in here if you want to play some games or check out a book. What I like to do is bring a book on the ship that I want to read and get out of my house. And then once I re uh, finish reading, I put it back in the bookshelf here and then go about my day. So as you make your way out of the library and around the corner, you'll find one of the main dining rooms. There's two main dining rooms on Carnival Glory. There's the Golden Restaurant, which is the midship main dining room. And then you have the Platinum Restaurant, and that is the back or the aft of the ship. Both of these restaurants are two stories. So as you make your way through here, you'll find that one is going to be for anytime dining, which is anytime between like 6 and 9.30 or something like that. And then the other dining room is for set dining, so 6.15 and 8.15, it could be 6 o'clock actually, maybe yeah, 6 o'clock and 8.15 probably for the set dining times. Now what dining time you decide is totally up to you. I will tell you that the anytime dining is typically the first to go and then the early dining is the first to go depending on the demographic of the ship. Um, I was on a 14 night sailing and the only thing that was left was late dining. Um, the early dining was waitlisted, and the anytime dining was completely gone. So once you figure out when you you know when you book your cruise and you figure out when you want to eat, make sure you book it ASAP because um, otherwise you'll be put on a wait list and you probably won't get the dining time you want. Um, you'll still get a dining time. Like the dinings, they do not sell out, but certain dining times do sell out. So. Uh, you might get locked out of early and be stuck on late or locked out of late and stuck on early. If you wait too late, you can go ahead and count anytime dining out because that's typically the first to go. Outside of the midship dining room on deck four is where you'll find the photo gallery. In the photo gallery, all these, um, well, all this stuff is uncovered at nighttime and during the day when the ship's actually outside of port. And you can buy some photos or you can take some photos. Also, a lot of photos are set up like display stations are set up throughout the evening on deck four and five as well. Um, the photo gallery hugs both sides, port and starboard of deck four. So again, deck four center uh, midship is the main atrium. One deck above you is the promenade. One deck below you is where you come on the ship on deck three. 
Heading towards the back of the ship, you'll find the Ivory Club. The Ivory Club is there. You'll find salsa dancing in here, a live band, sometimes a guy playing the piano. Uh, not really a piano bar that's up on deck five, but just kind of a cool, chill, jazzy type club, I guess you would say. Just behind the Ivory Club is the Platinum Restaurant. Again, another two-story main dining room, deck three and four. Right above this restaurant is deck five, and that is the Punchliner Comedy Club, where the comedy clubs are held at during this voyage. Uh, people like to sit back here because you can see all the glass that's in the back of the ship, so you can get a pretty cool uh, like panoramic view while you're enjoying dinner, depending on what time your dinner is, obviously, and depending on what time of year it is and what time the sun sets. So that's something you want to consider when making your dining room reservations, uh, what time dining you want and what views you want out the back window. Up on deck five, you'll find the Skybox Sports Bar. This is the sports bar that is connected to the casino. Now, this there is also a casino bar where people can go and smoke and watch uh, some TV there. But this is more of a sports bar type atmosphere where they have the TVs all over the walls and a sports ticker that pretty much goes 24-7. So if you ever you can't sleep or you want to uh, stroll through here in the middle of the night to see what how your favorite team did, um, you could watch the ticker on the wall, and that has all the major scores like MLB, NFL, NHL, whatever the season is. You'll find those there. They play a lot of soccer in here as well whenever there's not football teams or football games going on. Um, walking outside of the uh, Skybox Sports Bar, you get dumped into the atrium again. Uh, whenever we were on board, it was during Christmas time, so they were just decking the halls of the ship. Of course, Carnival famous for their glass elevators. They have four of them here. They go from deck two all the way up to deck 11. So if you want to get some pretty cool aerial shots of the main atrium, hop on one of those elevators and stand all the way against the glass and take some pictures because uh, it's pretty cool. Carnival, of course, known for their glass elevators in the main atrium because their new ships do not have them. Um, so pretty much Carnival Breeze was the last Carnival ship made that has the glass elevators in the main atrium. You also have the fun shops that are located on deck five. And as you make your way back from the fun shops, there's two, way to, uh, two ways to walk back to the back of the ship. You can either walk through the promenade, which is the area, the walkway that goes right to the left side of the casino, or you can walk straight through the casino. Of course, um, it is a smoking casino. So if you have smoke issues there, keep that into um, consideration. Uh, some weird statues on this ship. Of course, typical Joe Farkas design. And uh, there's some seating areas here on the left-hand side, and then more tables and some skill machines like the throwing the quarters in and trying to win some more quarters there. Uh, the promenade really uh, comes to life at nighttime because there's a band that plays right in front of the casino. So this area where we're walking right now could be a little hard to navigate, say around between 10 o'clock and one o'clock in the morning when the band's playing there. Also, when you're making your way back, you'll have a lot of, uh, especially at nighttime and really during f uh, formal night or elegant night, they call it, um, like the piano on the promenade here, all this is uncovered and it's all photo opportunities for you to take pictures in different kind of backdrops. And some of them are green screens where they kind of put in a photo of the ship or what have you. And some of them are just straight up backdrops of a ship wheel or things like that.
They have an arcade just before you get to the nightclub, and the arcade is fun because uh, they have their skill machines, so you could like put the try to line the arrows up just perfectly and win yourself an iPad or a what is it, an iPhone, a MacBook, or some kind of really expensive technology, whatever they have in the machine at the time. But during certain days of the cruise, and it's only for an hour per day, they have it's called a power hour where everything is 50% off. So say that it's normally $2 to play that machine, whether it be the arcade machine or the um, skill machine, foosball, whatever, um, air hockey, you can play it for half price. So if you're an arcade person or you wanna you know, kill some time and uh, have some fun, Check out the Power Hour in the arcade. That's always a good time in there. The nightclub reminds me of Beauty and the Beast with these candles. And um, it's just very, again, I keep mentioning his, mentioning his name, but Joe Farkas did a number on this ship with the public areas and the statues and the drapery and all of that. Not as uh, ornate as Carnival Liberty with all the cast iron all over the ship, but uh, probably a close second. It's the same class of ship too, the Conquest class. The Alchemy Bar is back here on Deck 5 as well, so once you come out of the nightclub, if you want to get a nightcap at the Alchemy Bar, not that you need one, but it's an option for you. Just past the Alchemy Bar is the Piano Bar, your late night sing-alongs in here. Some of them adults only, some of them aren't. There is signage, um, as you see, just before you walk into the Piano Bar, so it'll tell you if it's kind of an adult-themed show or if it's just a regular good old sing-along, but I don't think many people bring their kids into the Piano Bar. In fact, I don't think many kids want to go to a Piano Bar. I know my first piano bar experience wasn't until I was like 21 years old on a ship. In the back of the ship, it's called the Ebony Cabaret. That is where the Punchliner Comedy Club is held. Different showings throughout the cruise uh, in the comedy club, but you'll want to make sure if you want to go to a late night show, especially the rated R shows, get there early or line up early because there will be a line out the door and down the hallway, sometimes backing into the piano bar for people trying to see this show. Just outside of the aft lounge, there's the bar blue, and that's, I've noticed it's set up for karaoke during my sailings. Um, I've never really seen a live band on the stage, mostly just karaoke set up, but another venue to hang out and kind of if you're not like a, a nightclub person or if you're not a casino person and there's no shows going on, you could pop back in there to the bar blue and hang out in there. Now we're on deck nine aft. This is where the aft pool is located. You'll also find the seafood shack here. That's the a la carte dining option that has like the fried shrimp, um, clams, lobster rolls, a uh, little bit of everything seafood, even fresh seafood like oysters and crab legs you can do uh, buy here at market price. The pool back here is, so depending on what sailing you're on and what itinerary, it's either adults only or it's not. Now on my sailing, it was adults only and it was enforced too. So a kid actually did a cannonball in that back pool and uh, the lifeguard said, hey, get out of here, kid. It's only uh, 18 and up. So, uh, and I've also seen kids swimming in it like on Carnival Liberty. I've seen kids swimming in it without any problem at all. So maybe it's where the ship is sailing or maybe Carnival just don't know how to enforce it or when they're enforcing it or they'll do it when the wind blows, who really knows? So just know that it may or may not be adults only. One part of Carnival Glory that I really like, actually this whole class of ships, is the seating area that's behind the pool where if you're in the Lido buffet and you want to sneak away and there's no chairs inside, if you sneak to one of these corner tables just after the pool here, you'll normally find there are to be plenty of seating. We're gonna walk into the main area now, the Lido Deck Buffet area, and you'll see your typical buffet set up here. Now, one thing about this ship that some ships do not have, this mirrors each other. So you have the buffet area in the back, B 
the aft part of the ship. Then you have a buffet towards the front side. Now the only real difference between the aft end and the midship buffet, same level, same walkway. Um, you have the deli on one side and the sushi, uh, the grab and go sushi on the other side is that there's a walk, there's a walk station, Mongolian walk um, on the forward part of the buffet. Other than that, it's pretty much the same. You have your hot meals in the front and in the back, your salad bar at both and your dessert station at both. You can enter the steakhouse on the ship through the buffet and that's called the Emerald Room Steakhouse. And that's actually located on deck 10, so one deck above Lido deck. But if you're, you're walking in from the pool into the buffet, you'll see this big staircase. If you go up the staircase, that'll take you to the steakhouse. And of course, steakhouse is $38 per person. And the reservations are, um, I don't want to say required because I've seen people kind of just go in last minute, but they are definitely suggested. Now, hands down, one of my favorite venues on Carnival Glory is going to be the Old Fashioned Barbecue that's located on Deck 10 aft, just above the Lido Deck. So it's actually inside. In fact, if you're at the barbecue stand at the buffet and you look down, you'll be looking onto the dessert bar at the Lido Deck area, the marketplace down on Deck number 9. So there's two staircases. You just take the staircases up. You walk up here to the Old Fashioned Barbecue. So it's the same type of barbecue offerings that they have on the ships that have the Guy Fieri partnership with the Pig and Anchor. But for some reason, whether it be branding or licensing, they only have it's branded with Carnival's Old Fashioned Barbecue instead of Pig and Anchor Smokehouse. But it's like barbecue, um, pork butt, chicken and beef, mac and cheese, baked beans, potato salad, coleslaw, and a dinner roll. You have some barbecue sauces to choose from as well. This venue, also complimentary, normally opened um, from noon to 2.30 on sea days and on embarkation day. So again, check your fun times because they could change a little bit. If you're one of those cruisers who is not a big fan of being, you know, sitting out in the sun and roasting all day, you could hop up here to deck number 10, which is the panorama deck. And you could pop underneath one of these awnings here and stay covered and still enjoy the outside and a nice connection with the water. This is located on both port and starboard side. Now we're up here taking a look down onto Lido deck. Uh, shot this with the GoPro camera here. As you can see, the Lido deck is tiered. So you have a row of chairs here, a row of chairs here, and it kind of works its way down till you get to the main area by the pool, which is all just flat surfaces. Walking up on deck 11 aft is the spa deck. The spa deck has the jogging track. You have to run like seven laps on this deck to even reach a mile. But if you don't, if you don't mind running in circles, that's good for you. Uh, also, you have a basketball court here and plenty of area. So just behind the funnel. So if you keep walking on the jogging track and you look behind you, you will see the funnel, the big whale tail, the smokestack of the ship and a big open space where Looks like once upon a time they have, or they still do play shuffleboard here. And also you see the chairs stacked up. So also another place to lay out in the sun during the day. Keep in mind, there's no pools up here, but if you wanna just kind of get the sun and that's it, another good option to kind of escape the pool crowds is up here on deck 11, which is the aft spa deck.
As I mentioned, when you're on deck nine on the Lido deck and you look up, you can see how it is tiered. There's also two hot tubs, by the way, on deck nine, along with the beach pool in the movies that are, you can watch the, the dive-in movies, they call it. It's tiered, so it's kind of like amphitheater seating. So if you wanted to, this is really cool if you want to watch a movie on the big screen late at night. You're not having to like lay on the ground right underneath it and stare up at the screen. You could kind of be up a little more uh, or be elevated there. The water park or waterworks area on Carnival Glory was installed during its last dry dock in 2017. You have two slides there, also a dump bucket and a little splash area for the kids. So they really seem to enjoy the water park here on Glory. The sun deck or deck 12 on Carnival Glory is a weird configuration because on the port side, the left side, is devoted to Camp Ocean. So you have the kids playground out there, the outdoor area for them to play. But on the starboard side is part of Serenity. So Serenity goes up two different decks on this ship. And those decks are the sun deck, which is deck 12 on part of it. So on the starboard side is Serenity. And then if you go up one deck to the sky deck, which is deck 14, you'll find two hot tubs up there. And Serenity has both port and starboard or left and right side of the ship all the way forward. And that'll pretty much do it. We'll take a couple of more shots around the ship here before we wrap this tour up. Once again, my name is Doug Parker. I'm the host of Cruise Radio. This has been a walking tour of Carnival Glory. If you have any questions about Carnival Glory, feel free to drop them in the comments below and we'll answer them for you as quickly as possible. You can also listen to the Cruise Radio weekly podcast found at cruiseradio.net or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Just type in Cruise Radio and subscribe to the show. We have cruise news and cruise reviews there as well. Happens every Thursday. We'd love to have you over there. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Cruise Radio YouTube channel and give us a thumbs up there. Once again, my name is Doug Parker. Thank you so much for watching.